want to take it. it all you and I, hot back. damn, I miss it. Hot I damn, can't. I miss it. It's great yeah. how the record's doing, man. It's really starting to make a, a lot of noise. Ooh, Freestyling record. with Stevie Let's B, play. special guest. Hey, what's up, Latif? What's in up, the house brother? tonight. Okay. Latif, what's happening, man? I, I never got a chance to really break bread with you. I mean, we texted oh. each other for a little bit, but haven't had a chance. Yeah. To, so nice meeting you, bro. Yeah, same here, man. You in Miami, right? Yeah, I'm in Miami. Okay. Yes. Uh, we definitely got to hook up when we head out that way. Absolutely. Absolutely. So so let's talk a little bit about, I mean, first of all, I mean, there's so much going on. We got the Freestyle Explosion show that's happening um, right. And we also have a brand new single that, that that we're promoting. Stevie B's got this great record called "Take It All Back," um, getting a lot of traction at at some local radio stations and stations abroad. So, real excited about that. We can talk about Sirius XM too, because that was a that's a nice win. You, yeah, something yeah, to talk about, bro. Yeah, we no, we, uh, we, 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 we bubbling over there. We bubbling over there. Yeah, we and I know you were up. you were on a cruise not too long ago, Latif, with your wife, right? Yeah. You yeah, guys yeah. went on, on that uh, freestyle cruise, so we want to talk a little bit about that. And then uh, yeah. let's you know a subject matter that you're very familiar with. Let's talk uh -oh. about the state of freestyle. Okay. <laughs> All right. Love, so let, let's... Lovely conversation. Lovely conversation. <laughs> I love it, man. I'm good. Yeah. So you're yeah, speaking yeah. my language. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So let's start with the fun stuff. How was that freestyle cruise? You know, I was a little, you know, we love cruises. Me and Angel love cruises. When we got married, um, that was the that was a honeymoon. And mm -hmm. we didn't know we were going to like it. So I did a four-day cruise at Miami and Royal Caribbean. I said, yeah. let's try it. Let's do four days just in case. You know, I want to yeah, get yeah. the hell off the boat. By the time we got to the end of the cruise, like, I was so hooked. And I was like, oh, man, I didn't get to really get to know the ship. And yeah. the following year, we booked it again. And we went to Carnival. We said, let's do that. We'll do the seven-day. And then the following year, we brought the whole family. And so I love them. But then when they called me, they've been calling me for a few years to come and do it. And I was having a little issue about kind of, you know, doing the two together, you know, vacation. Like, where's my head going to be? Is my head, am I working or am I yeah. vacation? When I'm on vacation, I like to take my shirt off and chill out. If I'm working, I'm not doing that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You, you ain't showing the work dead work You're not showing the dead house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but by the time we got there, you know, and then, you know, you bring all this luggage and we fly into Miami and I don't know, we did this one at Orlando, but by the time we got on there, by the second day, and then, you know, you have to entertain. The, the fans were great. The fans were really gracious. I had a great time with them. But then, you know, they have the different nights for the fans. So you have white night, red night, green night, disco yeah. night. So you have all these different nights. So we want to participate. That's me and Angel. Yeah. We're not going to go in our cabin. We're going to play. I don't do the whole disco thing. I'll go there, but I'm not wearing a wig. You know, I'm not doing that. <laughs> and uh, I'll say that for the TikToks, but, <laughs> but uh, you know, I didn't want to do it, but we had a good I've time. seen you in a wig. I've seen you do some funny shit at your house. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, but it was, but it was good. And I, you know, I think more people, was, Priscilla did that one. Mm. Um, yeah. She does, she's been doing it for years. She's really good. No, I know I Priscilla. Know. We go way back. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, I know yeah, Priscilla. From, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So she's great. If you ever get a chance to go on, man, go on. It's, you'll have a great time. Yeah, so let me ask you, you know, being the fact that you are married to Angel, I know you've been for, for what, how long now? It's been 40 20 years. 20 years. Wow, that's a very long time. So yeah. how do you, how do you, yeah, congratulations. First of all, that's a, a big accomplishment for anybody in the music Damn business, right? right. Yeah. Yeah. That's a big deal. So, so how do you, how do you wear those hats, man? You know what I mean? Like, especially like a scenario like you just went through where you're on a cruise, right? You're trying to have a good time with your wife, but your wife's got to perform. So you got to do the managerial thing. And you also got to be like the, the cool husband that has fun with his wife. So how do you, how do you switch it up like that, man? You know, our relationship started from the business. You know, I was her agent. I was, I was booking the shows for her and I did a good job at booking her shows and, <laughs> <laughs> and it worked out. So you, you must know, have did a, pretty, you must have did a damn good job of booking them shows. Yeah, bro. yeah right. Yeah. You know, so it was a pretty say. easy transition. You know, when I put that hat on, even you know, because I married little Susie as well. So when I have them on the road, also, you know, I'm able to really separate that. If you see me with my wife on the road, you don't see us walking around holding hands unless she got the real high heels and I got to hold her. But it's yeah. hard to really tell that. So it's pretty easy. And she's good with it. She's like, yo, we're working. Let's do. Do what we have to do. So, but it's fun and and it works. And people say, "Oh, how can you work? You know that 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 marriage business thing doesn't work. It works for us because our our careers, uh, they um coincide. They they complement each other. I'm an agent manager. Yeah. She's an artist. 
Yeah. So it works. It doesn't always work out that way, though. It doesn't always work out that way. That's for sure. Many many times it goes down the tank because, you know, Mm -hmm. two two strong heads sometimes just collide and it's just not a good mix. You know what I'm saying? But you you found you found the secret sauce. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you, and you gotta and you gotta keep that you, you know it's a mutual respect thing and uh you know and the thing with i, I think with latif too he's not trying to be an artist so he yeah. there's no competitiveness yeah. and he right. is so beneficial to that relationship especially uh, uh taking care of business and somebody who's been at it as long as he, he is of right. confidence on both sides of the fence for the right, artists, because right. you know everybody, you know everybody knows that you manage little Susie from the beginning, and to right, keep right. artists under your umbrella for that long, yeah. they must love you, have a lot of respect for you, take care of their business right, you know, yeah. and and these are the major factors, and you have a lot of respect for them, and they have a lot of respect for you. Yeah, yeah, I am. I'm I'm, I'm blessed. I see a lot of managers. I see that rotating door a lot. I haven't experienced that, so I've been really blessed. But you know. You know, I've always wanted to be in this business. I had a really rough, you know, growing up. I, you know, I went to prison and my career started before I went away. So I was taken out of a situation just when everything was blossoming. Mm. So I was, really, I was pulled out of the situation, something that I wanted so bad. And I was taken. And now I'm watching everybody blow up on the screen, on the TV screen from the day room. I, I watched. I saw my wife for the first time from the day room. Mm. My one of the, <laughs> Sapphire, you know, I used to hang out with her, with her uncle. First time I ever seen her was, I used to know about her, never seen her. I see her on the screen. I'm telling people, yo, you don't know. I know her. I know. Yeah, nobody's believing me. Yeah, right. Of course, of course like, not. Yeah, sure <laughs> yeah, you do, yeah. bro. In your dreams, yeah. yeah so when I, came out, that, when I came out, the market was funny when I came out, but I didn't come out like that. So when I came out, there was a lot already negative and people were like already like, well, it's not really doing this. It's going to end. The, you know, I started hearing all that, but it didn't affect mm-hmm. me. I was going home. I just, yeah. I didn't see that part. I didn't see that happen. That's I mean, why you made it successful. Yeah, because you, you filtered yeah, so, all of that out, man. And you just yeah. had positive energy yeah. about the movement yeah. that you wanted to create. Yeah, and you know, and I loved that. I was blessed. And, and not only that, man, honestly, let's be real. I was a, I was a predicate. I had double felony. Where was I going to work? I needed to get. <laughs> what was I going to do? You need yeah. to do so, You need some. Yeah, yeah, you needed yeah. some alternative options out there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Under you know, the table I money. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know. So, so it was so, and, and that was always my dream. My dream. You know, I started. People don't know. I started as a, an, a rapper on stage for Lil Susie. I used to open up for her when she was seven years old. Wow. You know? So that I didn't know my, any of this history. Yeah, I didn't know I any of this history. Stage, I did Magix. I did Crystal City. I did. The Palladium. I did a lot of places, and I opened up as a as a rapper. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, remember, I was raised in Jackson Heights, Queens, the cocaine capital of New York mm-hmm. City in the eighties. Mm-hmm. Okay. Wow. Mm-hmm. And that was like a it was like a wave that came by and whoosh, took all of us, so swooped everybody away. Yes. That's what my career remember, felt like remember, was doing it started snow. Remember, it started snow down in Miami too. So we was. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, there was blizzards in Miami. Please give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yep. I think we got it so between you, Miami and Jackson Heights, Queens. We have yeah. a yes. yeah. but, you know? but you well, see I what have, he I, said, Stevie, real quick. You see what he said about you know uh, coming out of the uh, of the uh, the Bing Bing and and just n- having blinders on and just going for it. Because yeah. He didn't care that everybody was kind of like depressed and disappointed yeah. and thinking that freestyle yeah. was going to end. And that's what I was telling you about me and i can relate to what he's talking about but in a different form about me producing music again like right. I, I got all this ex- i'm like yo like, what, what i was telling you yo stevie let's go man let's i want to do this i want to do that because we, we you like got a lot of bottled in- up energy there yeah bro. man we're just like little stuff. kids in the candy store waiting to, to get busy and and, and, and create mm. you know what i'm saying well, it, seems, it seems like it seems like Latif that you know, once I got to know you, I actually never even saw you in that light. You know, once you did your book and start talking about your history and stuff. And right, uh, right. It, it's a funny thing how, you know, time changes us and it changes whatever our motivations are, too. You know, yeah. and either you say, hey, I want to do it on the outside or you can do that shit on the inside. Yeah. And all of our preference, at you know, on this panel here 
Uh, I think we all wanted to be outside, be creative. And you got some really cool people to love you and trust you for a long time. I mean, you're close to Susie's family. I mean, you had her on the road since she was a a baby. She's a baby. Five years old. You know, that's a baby. Yeah. That's a baby. She just turned 44 yesterday. Yeah, yeah, wow. That's, that's the, and, you got, and you still have a great relationship yeah. with her. So out of age. Out of age. Happy birthday. You know, father, Happy birthday, yeah. Susie. Her father, what was so crazy is that her father, um, he worked at a, a building, 520 Madison Avenue. He was an engineer. And I was working as a, a porter. All right. I was right out of high school. I got left back three times. My last round, I quit and went and got my GED and knocked it out. Aced my GED immediately. So school, you know, I didn't need it. So I got a job do, as maintenance, and I used to bring. I used to have the RX11. I used to bring my drum machine. Now I had. I was making good money. That was a uh, you know uh, the 13B the union. So I was making uh, that, and I, I lived with mom. So I had no bills. So, and I was right. making all, nice. I was in the 80s. I was making a lot of money. So I was mm-hmm. buying all this equipment. I used to go inside. I used to run the freight elevator, and it had the electric thing. And I used to have my drum machine inside a briefcase, and I used to be, do beats, plug it in. And people used to come in. It was 43 stories, the building. So people oh, used to Lord. come in. They say, and these were, this was the freight elevator. So these were all the workers, all the other engineers. They said, you got to meet Tony. I'm like, who's Tony? They said, yeah, he has a little daughter, you know, a daughter that she sings further. He didn't say little. I thought it was an older guy. Maybe he had an older daughter. And I was in another loading dock in the building. And he heard about me. He goes, oh, you're the kid that sits in the building. I was 21 years old. You sit in the building. You're doing beats. I'm like, yeah, he goes, let me hear what you got. And I let him hear my Walkman, and he was hearing all these raps that I was doing. I remember because he disappeared with my Walkman. I bugged out. I was like, yo, wait, I didn't see him all day. I'm thinking that this guy's my Walkman. He's like, you know, and then when I saw him, he tells me, he says, come here, I want to show you something. So I follow him to his locker room, and he opens up his locker, and I see all these newspaper clippings of this. It says, a, a star is born in Brooklyn. This little girl, at that time, she was like not even four years old. Good the Lord. New York Post. All these clippings of her. So I was kind of excited, but I was kind of down at the same time. I'm like, what am I going to do with this little girl? Like, you know, <laughs> okay, she's cute. He goes, matter of fact, she has her, her fifth birthday at Studio 54. Why don't you come? Mm, it was hosted cool. by the village people. This is the first time I've seen her perform. And the song that really killed me, she was only doing covers. She did All Cried Out, the Madonna's version. Right. She killed it. My hair wow. stood up, and I'm watching people cry. People have so no idea. That's why they look at her yeah. now. They have no idea what she what she did. She doesn't remember not doing this. Do you? I don't remember <laughs> before I was five years old. She does not remember not doing this. This is all she's ever done. You know? Right. You know, right. and it was from that point. And then her father was like, "You rap? Can you write a rap for it?" I didn't. I ended up writing a song called "Get Up." And that was her first original. And then we did a song called Children of the World. And it was on Star Search. That was my first $500 I ever made in the music business. Wow. Early on. Wow. That was early on, too. Yes. Now, how did you got, now, how did she, now, how, you know, between that time and when she did, uh, you know, Take Me in Your Arms and all that. Now, is that Tony Garcia? Uh, yeah. Did Tony do that? Now, yeah, she was what? How old was she now? 13, 14 by the time she did FIBA. that? Remember, she was on Fever. She did Randy. Okay. So Sal, right. Sal um, signed her when he was seven years, when she was seven years old. By that time, <laughs> I was crazy. already away. I was already away by that time. And mm. I remember listening to the Walkman. And we said it was a Friday night, and they put it on one of the mixes. And I was like, oh, my God. You know, and the next day I got on the phone, I called him. I'm like, yo, he goes, yeah, man, we signed her, da, da, da. but Sal didn't hold on to it. He said she was too bubblegum. Mm. So and that time he was doing hip, he was doing hip hop at that time, right? Yeah, well, no, I think he was still doing like Lizette. He had the cover girls. He was doing Okay, that, so this is this is kind of like into freestyle was already up and rolling. Yeah, it was already rolling. Yeah, because there's a there's a picture with the cover girls, the original cover girls and little Susie. I have that picture. She was little. So I have mm-hmm. that, I have that picture. But um when I was out already, he calls me up one time and he says, hey, why don't you come to a studio in Brooklyn? He goes, we're finishing up her album. Yeah, OK, boom. First of all, he knows my history. I was just surprised the fact that he even called me back. Wow, to be that's able, true. To be around yeah, his that's door. true. So I went I went there and they were recording one of my songs, which was going to be the, 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 the title cut of the album. It ended up not being because it was too bubblegum. And that's what we connected and we reconnected again. And at that point, he started taking me on the road with him. 
He was like, listen, come on the road. And, and you know, there was it was either I went on the road with him and, and, and Susie or his mom and Susie. And it always baffled me, like, well, here's this ex-con drug fiend. Like, <laughs> you must have, you must have, you must have convinced him and had confidence in you, brother. That's a that's yeah, a hell of a that's a hell of an accomplishment in itself. And putting her around her young daughter, that's a big deal too. So that's why I've never, never flipped on that. Do you know? In thirty-five years, I've never taken a day off. Wow. Okay. Yeah, Susan you're, like you're not working in, in a, a sense, right? You're not working. I'll, I'll be there. Yeah. I'll be there. That's a, so, that's a so, big deal. So between yeah. Susie and the cover girls, do you manage any other artists or is that as far as it's gone? Um, So I do Angel Solo. <clears throat> I do a lot of those. And that I like doing it. And then I created a thing called SAL. <clears throat> and it was a, a package I put together called, which was Susie, Angel, and Lizette Melendez. Okay. And I put that back in 2000 three or 2004, it ran for 10 years. Mm. Um, and, and the whole purpose of that was Susie and Angel worked a lot, but they worked different markets. So mm -hmm. Angel went to LA, I would fly out to LA with her, come back. Then the next weekend, Susie went out to the Bay Area and then came back and and uh, Chicago or Detroit, Dallas. Yeah. And, you, Detroit. and you had to be on all those flights. Yeah, so it was so cool. So you wanna group it together, it yeah. yeah that makes I needed sense. a way. I needed a way of bringing them together, yeah. mm -hmm. and I had this idea in my head. And I booked Susie. I mean, I booked Angel and Lizette for a show. We were still living in the Bronx at that time in Rhode Island. So now we have a four-hour ride to Rhode Island. And during that time, I got to know Lizette. I, I booked her, but this is the first time I'm really seeing her show, mm. and we vibe. And yeah. when I got home, I never told Angel. I'm laying in bed, and I'm thinking. I said, "Hey, I have this idea." I said, "I want to do something." I'm thinking. Susie, Angel, and Lizette bring it together, and I had the whole idea. So it's not a group; it's almost like a compilation on stage, like a, like mm -hmm. almost like a, like a, like a, like a, teaser, like a musical, like, like a musical, like a it's sampler a in the restaurant. Yeah, yeah. You don't know yeah. what you want until you try it all, you know. And so yeah. the idea was this could blow up and then give you guys your individual work, and it did. It worked, and um, and we did that. It was so funny because when we came up, I was having a lot of issues at that time with Salvatello. So I end up naming the group Sal. I say, <laughs> everybody thought I was crazy, but it was freaking genius. Yeah. It was genius. Yeah. The only bad thing is they kept calling Sal for the show. They kept calling yeah. him for the group. So, and it was okay. just pissing yeah, him that, off. That, that's not the, the, the nice, goal. That nice wasn't way to invent, reinvent, yeah. reinvent but, but the now, wheel. Yeah, that was we're bringing great, it back now. We're going to bring it back this year. I got a few offers on the table. So if yeah. the girls love nice. it, it's a fun, fun package, man. Nice. Really. Yeah, that's great, man. So obviously you got the management thing down packed. So let me ask you this, because, you know, we also like to mentor and, and give advice to, 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 you know, cats yeah. out there in the business. So in, in your eyes, what's the, the what's some of the checklist things that you need to do before you even consider managing an artist? Because we know that that can go south real fast. So what what kind of what kind of what kind of things should you check off before you're like, hey, I want to work with this artist, but are we a match? What are, what are some of the things that you need to think about? Yeah, I mean that's the key is is being a match. And you know, with a manager, you don't know who you're dealing with. I deal with a lot of different personalities, so you gotta know how to blend. You gotta bend. This one is not like this one. This one's like so you gotta you gotta kind of know how to move that. But I think that comes with practice. That's not like something you just jump in. I was fortunate. I was mm -hmm. kind of like. I kind of merged into this area, you know? So I learned almost on the job, on the job training, you know? Uh, so yeah, there's a certain personality. And also- What do you do What I, do you do when they ask for either uh, Susie or Angel? And they say, you choose. I know the markets. So it, it, if it's Dallas, I'm gonna say, let's do Susie. If it's- Houston, I'll be like, okay, we're going to bring Angel. It's out a there. business decision, basically. Yeah, right. it's going to be, yeah. be business. I vote, you know, as an agent, you know, I was a booking agent. I still am, but I don't book everybody as much. But even as a booking agent, people used to call me. People used to always think that I would put my girls in a place that a promoter, you know, oh, yeah, who you want? You want, you want, who you want? You want Cynthia? No, no, no I'll give you. I never did that ever. I still don't. Mm. I always service the promoters with who they wanted first and create the relationship because I thought that was important. To, to promoters are not dumb. So if they call you and they know, okay, you're married. A lot of times they don't even know I'm married to Angel until they figure when they say, okay, one room. <laughs> yeah, two flights, one room. <laughs> that's, when, that's when they figure it out. So 
Yeah. You're lucky you know, guy. But I, I always <laughs> learned to always service them, service them first. And then, and then I, I opened up that, that portal so I could bring everybody else in, you know, but man, uh, man, I say, you know, go in there, you know, it has to be a, a mutual respect and the artists have to trust you. If the artists want to manage themselves, you're going to have a problem. They have to trust you. And you got to know your thing. You got to know what you're doing. You can learn together, but you got to be open and, and you got to be honest, you know, and, um, well, surely you have done. Surely you have done a great job, bro. Congratulations, because yeah, and and you. wearing that and wearing that hat is very complicated sometimes. And then when you're managing two, and, and I mean they're competing yeah. artists for for roster positions. Yes, so yeah. uh, you know, you know what's so funny? Uh, I think so, so crazy because just dawn. I mean, when you start talking, Stevie. When I first met Stevie was at Club Decos. I don't know if you remember <laughs> this. I remember Decos. Little Susie introduced me to him. Now I was a fan already. I saw him for the first time in EQ magazine. Do you remember that article you did many years ago? Probably like no. 1982. <laughs> yeah. I loved EQ magazine. That was my thing. And I read this whole article on him. And that's when I learned who he was from that, from that article. And then it, it took off. But Susie introduced me to Stevie. He said, Stevie, this is my real manager. I was a real manager at that time, Latif. And he looks at me, he goes, Latif? I say, yeah. He goes, Yeah. You Muslim? I yeah. Say, yeah. He goes, I did ask you Fahim. that. Fahim. I said, Fahim. Salaam alaikum. I said, well, I'm Salaam. Not, yeah. not even Sama knows my name is Fahim. Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't know that either. I don't know yeah. if I should have brought yeah. that up. <laughs> I'm no, sorry, brother. Yeah. There are oh, people. Man. That's funny you say that. Uh, there are people when I lived in Tallahassee when I was like 17, 18. They only know me as Him or Fahim. I okay. never told them my name was Stevie. So it would feel weird to them to call me Stevie. Yeah, because they funny. only knew me as Fahim, and uh, and I. Did, I have I another name, name too that I've never told Stevie. What? What's the name is that? Awomila. That's my Yorubian name. Really? Yeah. Awomila. 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 Yeah, man. Awomila. <laughs> wow. See, all us went down that Islamic path. We went down. You know, those are the doors. That's the funniest thing I tell people. These are and the one of the things I remember through. when I met him that night, it's so funny. And I remember I'm still new. I have just got back into the game and I look at him. We were talking. I said, hey, you, you, what are you doing after the show? You hanging out? Because everybody hung out. And he told me, I don't hang out. Mm -mm. Do you know that that stuck with me? And to this day, I don't hang out in clubs. I don't hang Steve, out. You never know. You I never always, know. I always, look, I always looked at it like this. I always... First of all, once you get rolling like we was rolling, there's there's a time called rest time. Yeah. And my guys like to drink, they were smoking, you know, the girls yeah, yeah, and stuff. And I yeah. normally brought my girl with me. So yeah. I was ready to I was ready to get some private time and get yeah. rest, especially if you had some shit to do. And a lot of times yeah. we had interviews, we had to get up early in the morning, we probably had some flights. Yeah. And I took that shit, I took it serious early on. But my, my dudes wanted to go born. to a strip club. Was just born. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, so you know I have brought Paul and them with me, and I'm hearing them come with me sometimes. But yeah. like you know, I, I took it serious, and I take it serious today, and more yeah. serious today. Uh, yeah, yeah. That when you get off the stage at eleven thirty, twelve o'clock at night, or whatever it is, then you got a fucking yeah. four o'clock lobby check. Oh man, them four yeah. out, them four Boy, hours get drive. real serious, bro. You got to drive like yeah, I did I this past with day. Mother, so you know, I had to. I did. I had to be back, but it was weird because you know I'm just talking to him as a fan really and and it was just so for him to tell me that click it clicked to this day and i've told other people the same thing who have told me because i don't drink i don't smoke i don't do any of that stuff see i, I didn't do home. any of those things so it was, it was yeah. a, like a waste of my time and then when you out yeah. with people getting drunk and fucked up all the times you know you could yeah. have mosquito time here uh you could have you open yourself up for tr trouble yes. so i try not to put myself a, and make myself a target and when yes. you're in those kind of environments, and believe me, many a night it comes, oh, Jack, my dancer, got into a fight with the bouncer and this and that. I'm like, nigga, I don't even want all that drama. Y'all yeah. can have it. Yeah, and I actually enough had to put, drama. I, yeah. I, we have enough yeah. drama just by itself. And they was created because I had, Jack was my dancer. He was one of those drinkers that liked to fight oh, when no. he get drunk. Yeah, he, was, he have Samoan, half freaking uh, uh, Japanese. So he get a little alcohol in, he get that fire water in. He want to challenge, you know them bouncers. Them boys yeah. coming, they, they train for that. And he, yeah. I seen yeah. a bouncer wrap him up in Baker, in, uh, 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 Stockton or Salinas, yeah. Salinas. Salinas, California, he did a show with us. 
and they just wrapped his hand and he just just like a little piece of paper but the point is i didn't go no i don't like the drama i didn't do yeah. that i had to prohibit the guys but i'm glad yeah. that stuck with you brother I'm it really did. It's yeah. funny how things influence you, you and you don't you don't get it. Mm -hmm. And I've never told you. I used to tell Angel. I said, I got to tell Stevie that one time. So I got the opportunity. Thank you, man. That's nice. Sir. You probably Thank saved you. me from a lot of fights, man. They <laughs> yeah, the, the other thing I think should happen a lot more is I, I think that promoters, no matter what genre you're in, promoters should talk to each other. You know what I'm saying? When they're trying to do a successful concert, they should have yeah. the dignity to say, hey, listen, man, you know, my, my concert's going to be in three months. With, you know, what's, what's going on with you? When are you planning yours this year? And, and have that separation gap. Everybody, some of them do. would be some of them successful do. that way. Bobby some and of them Alan, do. They, 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 they discuss stuff. That, that, see, that, that, but see, that's the way, that's, that's big a boy perfect talk. example, that's too. That's big boy that's talk right there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so I don't know in the New York side, I don't know if Brian talks to Sal. I mean, Brian talks to Vito. I think they used to, because Vito used to be Sal's guy, remember, yeah. for a long time. So and I think at, at some point they switched it up, and I don't know if they're talking to this day because uh, you know, everybody's moving Sal's their own guy. direction. Mm -hmm. Sal's only Sal's guy. So Sal's, as long as it goes his way, you, you're his friend, yeah. you're good, you know? But yeah. I, I, yes. it's, very, it's pretty divided. It's pretty divided. I talk to those guys. It's yeah, the, so uh, uh, everybody's still, you know, it's, it's competition. Everybody wants to win. And uh, we know all the, we know all the players. So, uh, you know, I know the ones that pretty much get along with each other. And one thing I can tell you, the, 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 the friendliest ones I know and the respectful ones is Bobby and Bobby and uh, Alan there. Yeah. And, you know, and you got other people because a lot of people don't fool with Alan in the wrong way because, you know, he got he's got he's got he's got some political juice. So he's not yeah. the kind of guy you want to cross. I've seen and, that. Uh, OK. I've seen and. That. and and, uh, and you know his his i think his bite is bigger than his bark so you know yeah. some of them they learned their lessons yeah. uh, rather quickly but so, they're great guys and it shows why they're successful yeah so mm -hmm. let's they're talk a little bit about biggest. your let's talk a little bit about your uh yearbook that you do uh i the know it's a, it's it's a compilation of all the newsletters that you do throughout the year right right i just put the the, the first one out just did it okay yeah. so so, so I started what made you, yeah go ahead go ahead Okay, so mm -hmm. last year I started doing, um, I love writing. I'm not saying I'm the greatest at it. I just love doing it. It's like when I, I can think and I can type about as fast as I think. So I'm able mm -hmm. to put away a lot. Now I can look back and it'll be all full of typos and <laughs> messed up, but I can get the You got the idea stuff. down. You put the idea down. Yeah, yeah. So I have this thing, don't get it right, get it written. Okay? Mm -hmm. The only thing sometimes I have to put away for a while because like, I don't want to go back and edit. So I used to do a lot of posts. I still post a lot. I think I'm real big on social media. I love social. I think it's a very important uh, vehicle, and I'm always trying to, to to master it, even though it's basically impossible. But um, when I did um, uh, the newsletter, I said, okay, you know what? I want to do something where I can write. I always had a pretty decent mailing list back in the days. Stevie, you remember my Freestyle Blast back in the 90s? Of course. Yeah, so that went out. I had a mailing list of 97,000 people. This was before social media, okay? Mm -hmm. And I used wow. to blast everybody. And I used to get people, hey, man, can you not send it to me so many times? You know, I've had so many people. But it played a good role because it put me out there and it allowed me to promote not just my artists, because if you remember, I put a list of all the artists with a link mm -hmm. back. But what happened was people would learn everything about them and then they would hit me back. And that's why I kept a lot of people working and I did really well. I did really well yes. doing those times. When Facebook came in, I thought, okay, well, this is great, man. First, now Facebook basically took the business from me because now everybody can yes. contact the artist direct, which is cool. It's evolution. I was cool with that. I was like, mm -hmm. okay, let's move on. So I started doing the newsletter and I wanted something that I could write because I'm up really early. I have a standing desk here, stand up, put my music on, grab my coffee, and I'm, and I'm able to write. And I, I wanted a way of to kind of bringing people into areas and I'm still new at it. I'm not, I'm not there. Like I'm still looking for my voice, but I'm looking for areas of that people are not accustomed to seeing, you know? So I want to mm -hmm. take people backstage. I, I don't want people posing for it. Sometimes I'll pull up my camera. I'll see a couple people chit chatting. I'll take a, a picture. I'll show it to them and say, Hey man, I want to publish this. You know, I, I kind of want that sense. And I want to basically tell people. What do you think? What do you think is important for the fan to know? I mean, Everybody kind of knows a lot of stuff about uh, a lot of the artists, 
but yeah. the backstage stuff and the, what is it that you think is important that keeps the fan interested in the artist? What would you show if you had an opportunity to show that kind of stuff? People, people like the behind the scenes. They want to they know what you're doing, Stevie, in your dressing room. They want to <laughs> know, you know, they want to see this stuff. You know, this stuff is, is, is pretty interesting to them, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yes. yeah, so that's why I don't want to do really artist interviews. Like, we know it. We know them all. You know, like yeah. if I came to you and I want to do an interview, I might be like, let's talk about the first job you had before music business. Yes. Boom, that's yeah. interesting to me. Yes. Because I heard yeah. everything else. I heard so that's why, I, that's why I always ask these questions. Say, are we going to stay traditional? And if a guy gets me on an interview and say, uh, tell us how you start singing. I'm like, bro, <laughs> are you kidding me? Yeah, yeah. You know, when's have, it? Have you, you done know, your homework? I, I, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I get it, especially if I'm doing like a, a, a for some new art, uh, new audience, people who yeah. don't know me. I, you know, I, I'll cut some slack there, you know, if I'm breaking in some new thing. But, you know, when you're doing this 35 plus years, uh, you know, th there's other things about us. Like, Felix, we were just talking about a few minutes ago how we're going to do the hydroponics uh, for uh -huh. vegetables. Uh, I changed my diet. We were talking about how I just changed the diet. No meat, period. You know, right. Alan will be glad. To, Alan's going to be glad. That I didn't even share that with him yet. Oh, wow. But, uh, I'm, you know, I'm on a complete no meat. And when I say no meat, and I mean oh. no meat, uh, mushrooms are my new meat. So uh, oh. fruit, fruit. And, and, and so these are the kinds of things that mm -hmm. I think that people our age now, I think our audience is 45 plus. Uh, yeah. I think everybody's dealing with some kind of issues. Uh, if it, if it's not just a uh, post traumatic, post COVID, post this, post that, uh, oh, just, just that. daily. Yeah, do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> just that. <laughs> you just want me to just say it outright? That's all. It? Yeah, we didn't get the other stuff yet, man. But you know, all, we I, fat, all yeah. I all yeah. I ask is a little bit overweight, and um, I actually like TikTok. And these places that, you know, you can go get a lot of informative posts on health now, this kind of diet, yeah. that kind of diet, uh, what's in the foods, what's yeah. like, like some of that shit be like, I'm like, what? How? No. Yeah. And, and they're like, yeah. And I do my research and I'm like, oh shit. So it's so informative. It literally has made me a new student of life. And it's come to the point now, and I have these little cysts on my arm and stuff. So I did a research and they, and it's just acidic diet. And I think I'm think I'm the kind of guy who eats well, I'm eating yeah. beets and this juice. And you don't know beets is not a natural vegetable. It's a hybrid vegetable that was created by us. Carrots is, I mean, me and Sama was just talking about these kinds of things. And I think yeah. this is a kind of informative stuff that yeah. I think people will get a bigger benefit out of than yes. to, Talk about, you know, okay, you want to hear about how I started singing, you know, all of us yeah. probably singing in the shower and all that. But as yeah. we get older and these, having these kind of intellectual conversations, because I don't think our fans are those Goo Goo Gaga fans. Ah, they're not going yeah. crazy. Yeah. Most of them have known us for 35 years. They know us just like they yeah. know their family members. Grew up, grew up with you. Grew up with us. So yeah. what is it that we can share with them now that's so informative? I mean, I think that's I think that's great because you got to realize what you do on stage, okay? That takes a lot. Not only the, the performance, but the traveling. You got to be healthy. You got to be healthy. People don't know, Latif. Uh, people don't know. The hardest part of what we do is it's not on stage. The, the fucking traveling, traveling and, and getting the work up that and goes lobby in. call. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah I tell I tell artists that. I mean, I tell promoters, I say, yeah, we don't charge you. I'm not charging you for the acts. That's fast. That's 20 minutes. I charge you yeah. for that damn trip. I travel, take travel time. Yeah. That fucking flight going across. That's a bit. Yeah. So, and some of you had Orlando over the weekend. You had to drive. You had to do this. You had to come in. You have to do all this stuff. That's yeah. the that's the time consumption. Yeah. But the hardest part also is having some type of type of consistent dieting, uh, good yeah. eating. Hardest time when we get into a city, unless you already have it mapped out, or if you might have a couple of fans or friends or family that's cooking for you. Uh, you, you, you're going to be eating junk and you're going to be eating shit. And yeah, let me yeah, tell right. you something. I wasn't feeling like I was eating. And then I found out and you think I'm going to Whole Foods and I'm doing this and I'm drinking beet juice. And I'm like, I didn't know beets wasn't a natural uh, vegetable from God. I didn't know it was a hybrid. 
that wow. so if a, if a vegetable can't penetrate the nutrients can't penetrate the cells you're not going to get the sugar you're not going to get the glucose you're not going to be healthy you're not going to feel good right. and the more I, I i go into it i'm i'm like excited more and more every day because i'm i'm finna do my own hy hydroponic uh, uh, vegetables here on the third floor. Here, I got three floors oh, wow. in this house. Right. But my family is into it too. My daughter, my son. My son is fanatical. So I'm really? gonna do my own hydroponic, and I'm gonna grow my own shit. I can afford to do it. And I told yeah, I yeah. told my wife, I said, when I'm finding out about stuff, and I'm like, let me do this research. And I said, he can't just say that shit, nigga. I've been eating this shit for a long time. Yeah. And <laughs> what are you saying? What are you saying? You mean salmon is not orange naturally? Wow. That's orange salmon. The salmon, when you cut it open, it should be orange. That shit yeah. is gray when it comes from them farms. They're poisoning uh, the meat. us. Poison. They're, they're fucking. They're killing us, bro. Yeah. They're Shh, fucking they're killing us. Yeah. Right. It's, it's, it's not a fucking conspiracy. So we're talking about interesting topics. That that's yeah. how we got into this. And that's a, that's important it? because of your lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, you bring that lifestyle. You bring that lifestyle to, to the stage. Yourself. We work so much. That you, I really appreciate getting up early in the morning. Like he he gets up early, and I know feel that you get up early too. Yeah, I do. I'm a I'm an early bird, and I get yep. that sun when it first comes in. It and feels I, good. Yeah, and it get and we get to I get to feel the day when. So when you get up early, you have a nice long day, and by the time ten o'clock, eleven o'clock coming around, That's twelve o'clock, it, man, it's over. It's bro, yeah, it's over. I'm done with most of everything I have to do by noon. Yeah, see, really? And, and, wow! And, and so, Good for you. So, Paula, we went on. The, I went. On, I got these electric uh, motors, motorcycle things, and we went and we drove for at least a thirty-minute drive in a place called Pepe, which is the beach, uh, the, the other beach. I live by the beach, but I went to. I, mean, I live by a place called Recreo, Recreo. But I went to Pepe Beach. We rode the bikes. It's hard to get Paula to do that too because we got to go on the street a little bit too. So, but the 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 uh, the, the the exercise. It's good handling the bite. You're dealing with the psychological traffic, yeah. people about to run your ass over, all that shit. Yeah, so good. there's a danger. There's a little danger there. At the same time, it's it's a, a, a physicality. It's very stimulating. It's incredible. Uh, yeah. Getting back to, um, I'm not I'm not tired yet. I, I want to I, I haven't enjoyed my house enough, and we're here every day. It's just us right now, and uh, and the dog. My kids have left. They all and we sending them pictures. We said oh, I brought the kids. I brought my, my I brought my daughter. I brought my grandkids. I brought my uh, uh, um, uh, my son. Um, and they they love it. And then you know what we do all day is we take pictures and make them jealous as hell because they're over there in That's Vegas. Sweet. It's cold. It's cold as hell. Yeah, uh, now, you know, yeah, it's, it's cold there. over there. Everywhere you yeah. go, it's just cold. And we in we in eighty five seventy eight. 80 all day is just so beautiful. Look at that right there, bro. Look at that. Will somebody look at that? Look at hold that. On, hold on, somebody hold on. look at there that. You go. There you go. There you somebody go. look at that. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> so my, my, my studio is outside, like close to the front of the house. And so when I'm over here and I'm blasting, I don't disturb them. And I, I designed it like this. I built this house from scratch during COVID. So when we come over here, bro, I, this is a, yeah, this is a 90, this was the 90 quickest. 60 something days that but i'm coming back though i got shows booked i just did a brand new song with a brazilian thing so we'll talk about that later that's in the schedule we'll talk so about the Latif. 24th and the 25th back to back right yeah palm springs yeah palm springs and then to la so that's a back to backer so and i think yep. it's like what maybe a three hour four hour drive yeah like palm springs hours, to exactly. la mm -hmm. so that's not that bad i, I don't yep. mind those so much it's a nice trip but, too it's a nice drive it's a nice drive. It's a nice drive. It's a nice drive in the yeah. desert right there. Yeah. And you get right into Retro Kumangara. Yeah. So, you know, I love that about it. But the hardest part of these things, and, and I like to talk about this, is how we're going to have consistency. I'm going to be 65 years old next month, y'all. Wow. So, God bless. God yeah. bless. You know, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm really working on my health. I really want to try to stay healthy because, you know, at some time I'm like, man, I'm tired. I tell yeah. the God in my mind, I tell the God in my mind, I'm exhausted. And then once I started changing my diet a little bit, I got fucking got a new zest. 
to it'll do it to, to do more shit more and then energy. felix yeah. and then felix be coming up with you need to do this and you need to do that you need to do the fucking I, I, a fucking podcast and you need to do this and you need to have a wine and you need to have a liquor and you need to have a toilet you need to, I'm like, <laughs> there you go you need that a spring chicken, Latif, I'm, like, I'm like i'm like boy i want to sleep bro all i want to just get some sleep well, I'm full die. of energy. I'm, yeah. I'm full of energy right now, and I'll and I'll just uh, be a, a promoter of this. And Alan has been, you know, he always tells you know Alan's a vegetarian. He's been a vegetarian for many years. Mm. I just figured but, that out when you were talking. Now, I didn't. Know yeah, that. well, yeah, he does. See, if you notice, he he'll when he's at the shows and they have food at the shows, he'll have vegetarian food for you know to to meet his diet too, which is okay. good and healthy. Yeah, but yeah. I think it should be a conversation that we have. Uh, more often amongst our uh, demographic, yeah, and but, uh, and I, and we should talk about the results of it because it's going to show. It's some shit that you know. If you're doing it, and and I think I tell my son, I say, don't preach it because he's a hell of a preacher with it. I say, but you have to be the example. And when people see you, if you want to convince them to change their life and change their diet and their way of life, you have to look good. It's like the guy riding around in a Volkswagen. He's going to try to teach me how to be a millionaire. Right. I'm like, no, bro. You need to come in a Maybach, and then you can have my attention. If you're doing it right, yeah. you don't have to pretend anything. People are gonna ask you, "Yo, what do you do, man?" Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. they they, they want advice. Like they want advice. Yeah. But I but like I, what you were I, saying earlier about the, uh, you know, the and I told Stevie this already. I go, Stevie, we got to start doing more behind the scenes stuff. The mm -hmm. BTS is what people want to see. Let's yes. start documenting these these freestyle explosion shows, going backstage yes. and getting that journalistic a vibe of what's happening mm -hmm. back there because that's yeah. the special moments that people want. They see the front of the stage shit all yeah. the time. They want to see the I'm shit a, they're I'm not supposed to be seeing. I, I'm gonna bust. I'm gonna bust your bubble a little bit. Yeah, go ahead. Sometimes backstage is fucking boring as fuck. It's okay. We don't, first That's of what all, editing is all about. Let me tell you what changed. <laughs> Let me tell you what changed. Look, uh, even before COVID, they didn't allow certain people not allowed backstage, and during during COVID, only essential people. So yeah. when you yeah, when you travel change. with people in my band yeah. and all that, we all know each other. So backstage, it's kind of like you sitting there waiting for your turn. So I have a separate dressing room. And a lot of times if my wife is not traveling with me, with, with me uh, I'm sitting there by myself and, and I'm like, I'm, you know, I'm like, what song is Lisa on? I mean, how many yeah. has she done? And then yeah. they'll come back and say, oh, she's on her third song. So you might want to put your jacket on and get ready, put your ears in and get ready yeah. like that. Am I, am I lying, Lati? No, you know, exactly. It's, but you see, I'm a little bit different because I'm constantly from the dressing room to the stage that's to the right. dressing room. That's right. That's so right. I stay busy. I really, really even sit down. You probably will never see me sit down backstage anywhere. I'm always yeah. running. It, I got a lot of adrenaline. I'm always nervous. You'd be surprised what entertains people. people right. You know what I mean? Just, yeah, just yeah. knowing that that they're like in Stevie B's mind or, or somebody's <laughs> mind while they're yeah. thinking about whatever they're thinking about yeah. is entertaining for them. Seriously, yeah. though. And people well, a lot of us, a lot yeah. of us, but a lot of us are, are just really getting into that getting into that zone. You get you want to know how the audience is. I'll come back and say, well, then you know how did Rob Bass do? Or how did this one do? How did yeah. did, did, did yeah. John did Johnny kill it? Did how's TKA doing? Yeah. Is Susie yeah. doing this? What well, you know? How's the audience respond? Do we have a good crowd? Because you yeah. know, when you got that hot ass crowd like San Antonio, I'm not saying other places are not good. All no, no, yeah, good. I know what you mean. But then it's some exceptional ones. The ones fuckers vocal. acting, they fucking mm -hmm. acting like they acting yeah. like 16 year old teenagers. And these is yeah. grown folks. They losing yeah. their mind up in there. So when yeah. you get that. That, that's an extra hype. You say like, okay, I'm like, I gotta okay. turn it out. Yeah, I, I got. I'm like, I, I'm like, and I Rob will come off. I'm like, yeah, bro, you done sucked all the fucking oxygen out the building. Bro. I, didn't, I didn't put my fucking. He was giving him a hard on. time when we were interviewing him. Yeah, 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 yeah. But he, but all of this has been fun for all of us, and and everybody has their uh, their stories that they tell, and and I think you yeah. share a lot in your in your uh, in your blast that you do. I yeah. think you share a lot. And uh, what are you going to have new, you know, for, you know, you know, for, for anything you I, I'm trying to bring something new to the camp, you know, and, 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 and uh, uh, Samo's working with me on a lot of stuff, too. I found right, it. Right. He's a he's a he's a great resource for a lot of stuff. That's great. But what did you are you adding anything new to the shows or anything you guys are trying to do or. You know, it's hard for me to do anything with the Cover Girl show because it's very hard for me to maintain my my three. So, you know, it's I got Michelle on board now. So mm -hmm. she's doing on a star. Uh, Caroline's taking a break. 
Uh, Sunshine's taking a break. And then, you know, so I have to rotate them. So for me with Cover Girls to do anything outside of what we we have to do, I, I can't, I'm scared to move. I don't want to really move yeah. with that. But change that problem. So when I told you, so I, was saying you uh, I told Felix, remember I say, you can't change because there's so many moving parts. Yeah. And yeah. even if Angel got it and the other girls don't have it, it's not going to work. Every all that it took a long yeah. time to get all those things synchronized. Yeah. And yeah. the same way with my band, the minute that yeah. you change, look, yeah. I try to change yeah, my the show. World stops. Yeah. I try to I try to change my show one time and bro they and look. Flipped. They don't yeah. let me they don't they won't you let me what? change. The artists it. get bored of it, but they don't realize the the fans don't. They really no. don't. That's right. We yeah. hear it a yeah. thousand times. That's right. Yeah, they I don't. do that same move. I've been doing that same way. Everybody leaves their mind. So, and Alan has the same thing. He says, "Stevie, if it if it's not broken, don't, don't try to fix it. it. Yeah, so don't yeah. fix you know, it if it ain't new, broken." My new, my new uh, newsletter is based on that. You know, talks about you know how you know we have to. And not only that, I just when I was on a, on a conference with with Alan, I needed some advice. I needed to know about you know like the penalties if people go over because I'm like, yeah, we we don't have too much flexibility. We got to be careful because we right. have a, a constraint we have to the artists have to come on they have to they, and they have to be off by a certain time so it's really not that much time to play they have to everyone has to be respectful of the time yeah, it's a tight schedule you know? it's a tight schedule yeah, tell me about them right? i'm at the end i'm the guy spot. i'm the guy they come to and say bro you gotta you gotta cut your show bro i'm like why well, you didn't tell all the nine acts that came before me to cut their damn show now you come to he say stevie that's why you, you gotta, get paid you the big bucks you, you know you know my, you know it may be coming and you know what? And I get it. And yeah, I get, yeah. I don't like it. I don't I like it. But I have to be willing to do it because of the position I'm in, or it could cost them a lot of money. You know, and I'm, yeah, you yeah. know, you know, they get See, penalties because you, you, you got union. Because, you know, you got the band. I mean, I don't know what will be harder because so when I go, even though we're track, I make sure I have a few different variations because I've done Bobby where Bobby says, "Can you give me eight minutes?" Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, right. Yeah, yeah, it's like, it's like a hard stop. I'm like, yeah. which one are you gonna yeah. cut? Which song? Which song do you want to cut? Show, show me. me. The last song. That's the song that's yeah. gonna get cut. If you want to cut? Yeah. Show yeah. me. You would, would tell me which one. Yeah. And I, the when same. they tell me that, so yeah. I say, which one you want to cut? You want to cut because I love you? You want to cut in my eyes? You want to cut? I want to be the one? You want to yeah. cut yeah. part of your body? You want to yeah. cut dreaming of love? I say, yeah. do you want to cut spring love? Mm -hmm. And they say, yeah. uh, but just go ahead. Let me go talk to the venue because I say I can cut them. Okay. I'm ready to go back. I'm ready how to go about, back to the how hotel about the, anyway. How about the vice versa? Okay, you got more time than we were what we were going to give you. Instead of thirty, got you plenty. got forty five. Hey, if I you got, got a if you got a catalog, you're good. But if you yeah. don't have that many hit records, what what do you do? I then? tell you, I got I got plenty in the tank, bro. Yeah, I will. yeah. And, and 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 Latif, I, and part of the conversation I'm gonna have, I think that uh, in a year or so, I'm not going to do the festival shows uh, okay. as much because. I, the fans are some people complain and I get it, too, because, you know, this is this is redundant to us. We do it the same right. lineup every I got so much other stuff to do. I send stuff over to Felix that he don't even know. Felix don't even know I can sing in three languages. So he's like, bro, I don't even know you can sing in Spanish. And I sent him a Spanish song. He was like, no, I got I to gotta do a freaking, I got yeah, uh, yeah, to do a mix. I got to do another mix we, on this. We, yeah, we're going to get to that. We're going to get to That's that. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'm, I'm, you know, I come from Telemundo. I come from Latin radio. So, like, when I know, like, what to look for and the ingredients are there. So we definitely need to dive into those waters. But right now, it's all about take it all back and promoting and, you know, getting the word out there, so on and so Absolutely. forth. Well, well, the one thing I, I was going to say, too, ha had the girls even thought about doing any new music or is everybody pretty complacent at well, this time? We get the materials, but you know, this is where I, I, I come in. Everybody's done new material and I, I, I tell people keep doing it. You know, me personally, like Angel Like You, she has a lot of records, a lot of records. The, all the songs, we do what, eight songs now, they're all video records. So all the songs she performs, they're all songs you can see videos of. I personally don't want to compete with her hits. I don't want to mm -hmm. do that. I don't want to do that to her. If the track comes to me, it's got it can't be something all that I like. It has to where I go to sleep and I'm singing it. It has to really now she resonate. wants to record. Yeah, it's got to resonate. She wants to record yeah. stuff. And I said, well, when you record, mm -hmm. this is the key. Don't record for the audience. You can't. Not at this point. You got to record for you. You have to record something that you are gonna love, that you're gonna enjoy, and that you're gonna want to play when you're in the house cleaning, 
that's where you have to be with this, you know, mm. to present it back. It's really hard. Our fans are really stuck to the classics. That's what they want. You the know? complication, and like, I think, I think the complication yeah. comes in, especially with a lot of the freestyle people. A lot you of them didn't write, they didn't write, now, now, they didn't write it. Back. Yeah. They didn't write and produce their stuff. So I, I, I've always been hands on. I mean, yeah. it, I was tailoring my own clothes kind of thing. Right. In other words, right, right, I was tailoring right. my own music. I didn't right. really go outside to get a lot of stuff. So right. I don't think a lot of the, I think there's a few that maybe write and produce. I mean, do we know any besides me that, that do writing I mean, they and production? Might, they might write, but I don't think there's anyone doing both. There's no one that's performing, writing, and producing. Yeah, that's a tough, oh, that's a tough yeah. one. So yeah. I think the hardest part too also is to kind of like the same, when I do the tailoring uh, analogy, meaning tailoring, or tailoring a song for the artist, their voices, their look, and tailoring it for the audience that they're playing to now. Because the same people that they were playing to, you know, uh, 30 years ago, they've changed. Now they still like freestyle music, but I'm on, I'm on this kind of tip. If you like me, 25 years ago i got a little bit more to say a little bit more mature a little bit more experience and if you like my love songs then why you won't like them now i know a little bit more about love now than i did 35 years ago yeah you know i have i, I have a little that. bit more yeah. i have a little bit more to share yeah. now how are you going to express it what you learn now from your experiences like you were talking about early on in, in the with the legal system and all that and you know you got to turn turn your life around Right. and recreate and then the same circumstances are not out there like we had you know radio going for us now a lot of us were new radio stations flipped because of freestyle music radio station went from rock and they started being power stations or hot stations because of our music but the hardest part now is uh getting terrestrial radio but you have social media you have these platforms that are actually more powerful so now who's going to have the courage to to put uh you know you know to put a put a tony garcia to put a joey gardner to to put a all of the producers that were hot that was literally designing creating and developing quote unquote freestyle music robert cavillis he was doing a dance dance version it wasn't freestyle but he was doing more pop dance so how do you know these people have moved on is there a new set of producers that can interpret figure out where we are how it's going to fit and how you're going to market and sell it and hopefully the artists still have their their their, their, their yeah, vocal yeah. cords yeah. that can pull off a track uh that can be useful or compete with see what the thing that latif was talking about was i don't want to compete with the angel that was 23 years old as opposed to the angel that's 40 something or 50 something years old is she going to be able to, to 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 hit the nail on the head is she still be able to perform the song that's going to be meaningful in 2023 and going forward that's a that's a tough one yeah that's a hard thing to do there's no saying no to it we are wide open we get demos i listen to them i sit here praying that something could come across because i'll take it to a studio immediately record it and, and and put it out there and we got social media yeah we the, the distribution platforms are there it just takes yeah. a lot more work you don't need as much money as you did before but you need a hell of a lot more work do you do you think that the fans punish the old school artists by one that like i'm like this Oh, I don't know if I want to hear a new uh, Commodore song or a new Earth, Wind & Fire song. You know, you don't have Maurice. You don't have this because, you know, you got Philip Bailey. But if it's not being produced by Maurice, do I really want to hear it? So a lot of our fans don't want us to compete like you were just talking about. You don't want to compete with Show Me. You don't want to, I, you know, Stevie, I don't want you to compete with Spring Love. I'm like, I'm not competing with Spring Love. You are. I already did. I already did. Yeah, no, I'm talking, about, I'm talking about me, like, so, like, so with a show me, show me, you know, that's basically, you know, when people think about Angel, think about show me, people think about this, if I'm going to come to her, I want to come that I mean, that song, that's not even something you can think of. This, it's like your song, Stevie, songs become magical, you got to think of why you like certain songs, you don't, yes, right, an artist cannot come to you and say, hey, man, you need to like this song, you music takes us over we know when it's a good record it's well that's the problem i think that's a big i think that i think that that goes back to what the real problem is in freestyle 
a lot of the artists didn't write and produce their own stuff. So you always dependent upon somebody coming in and designing the clothes for you. It makes it harder. For you. It, makes it makes it, it harder way to do, hard. Do look, a new it's composition. not easy. Yeah. yeah look, it's yeah, not easy yeah. for those of us that can go in and do it yeah, as absolutely. opposed to. Yeah. What do you think, uh, Felix, was the formula now that got everybody excited about? It? Look, when I'm writing the song and, and I'm trying to make old school sound current, I'm trying to make it sound relative shit. You know, I'm hearing a lot of shit that I'm like, look, some of our stuff need to be, if they'll play this, they should play that. That's my idea. Right. If they can play this dance song and they, well, they should be able to play that. We ain't dead yet. We, we still alive. A lot of freestyle artists still look good. We, we're still happy on, we still do great shows. But why is it that we can't find a platform that's big enough, like a Spotify or a Sirius XM or these big old platforms to say, you know, freestyle is so legitimate. It's so established that we should open up the platform and allow artists that come in with good shit. Now, one thing I'll say, you got to come in with good shit. And if it's just mediocre, you know, it should not be added just like any other song from any other genre. But if it's a competing thing and the right things are being done, promotion, marketing dollars, whatever it is, go behind what a record there really goes. But I always say it starts with the song. And I think there's a drought. There was a drought. There's a drought. Some of the new artists got some pretty good stuff, but I'm not looking for no young buck to try to come knock me off the off the top of the you know knock me off the throne. But now, do you think that we need to cater like like when we talk about what makes a successful song? Is it something that's getting a lot of streams? Is it something that people are buying? Like what is it? Like what is it that we're looking for? We you know you got a new record, so it's a it's a banger. It's think, a banger. I, I think Felix should jump into this too because he has a good sense coming from radio, and then he's a producer too. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, he's a producer. Yeah, of course, of course. Well, he, I was you know, long time ahead, radio DJ. Well, in that long, particular song, did you produce that? I remixed it. I remixed that song. Yeah. So, so the 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 reason why I'll, I'll say it real quick. The reason why me and Stevie got together mm. on this, he sent me the record, and he was like, "Hey, put your ears on this. Let me know what you think." And when I heard it, I was like, I, I hear something in this that I want to do. And that's what I told Stevie. I said, I want to do something to this record. He goes, no, I'm sorry. And, and then I sent him a beat that I was working on. And Stevie mm -hmm, heard I the love beat. That beat. Stevie heard the beat. He goes, I want that beat. I go, well, I'm going to use it for like an acapella re, re, um, new order uh, <laughs> uh, a, a mashup that I want to do. And he was like, nah, I want that beat. <laughs> I go, okay. And then when I heard the song, I go, well, maybe we could use it for, for the song. And he goes, that's a good idea. And that's exactly what we did. We Well, the main thing, the main thing on this song is yeah. I did the song a couple yeah. of years ago, but it was missing. The original idea was because I, you know, I don't tell all the stories about, I sent this song for, to a couple of people to get involved with me. And, you know, when you want people to get involved with your with your music, they get involved with your life, your career, staging, especially when you start doing duets and, 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 and you know, mashups with other people. So you have to be careful what you're going to do because the shit might pop. And then all of a sudden now, you know, you got to share the revenues. You got to share the stage. You got to share a whole lot of shit. Yeah, the chicken so in the fridge gets I, what smaller. I thought, yeah, chicken in the fridge started to get a little different. That's why I never <laughs> went with the, the, the group concept. Yeah. But what I thought was it always missed those samples of the old school stuff. So originally when I thought about it, I said, damn, you know, I thought, what if I can get Lisa to do one day on, a, on one of those breaks? Wonder if you take me home, would you? And then you have the participation from a lot of artists. So, right, right. you know, I sent that out like that and it, it came, you know, I sent the dove out and, it, and the dove never came back. So, mm. uh, you know, uh, it, it's like this. I said, it needs something in there from talk about the past and this and that. And then Felix sent me the thing with um, Part of Your Body. He sent me the thing with Dreaming of Love. I'm like, NECA! That shit is yeah. hot as fuck. That was it. And then he put yeah. Spring. And then the Pit thing, I had already had from years ago, but it was on another version. He put that right in the beginning. We go back. Work. Way it back. Work. And yeah, I'm like, I had a nice little flair to it. You know? somewhere. I was on my way out the door. I think we were headed towards the cruise. And when CB sends, I want to listen to it right away. I get a lot of people send me stuff. Yeah. A lot of times I don't open. I want to, because I always want to be respectful and I never want to assume. So later on, I might, but when Stevie sends me stuff, I want to listen to it right away because. 
Because my shit be hot. Lati. Lati. First I got there, I called Angel. I said, listen to this. She goes, oh, shit. I said, it's a dope bracket. My shit. My shit be hot, bro. That's all I'm That's all I'm Hold on. Hold on. Look at my face. My shit. My shit be hot, y'all. My shit's still hot, bro. It is. Okay. Don't get it. Don't get it twisted. You doing video okay. for that? Uh, we did. Oh, uh, right, Felix yeah. did one. Felix, Felix cut cut up uh, um, the first one, which is yeah. good too. Felix, I want to tell you, I like yours too. It's, it got did, it got quite a quite a bit of attention. Yeah, it's Let's competing it with him. So, yeah. And then I called yeah. Tolga yeah. to do uh, the lyric video, and then he found yeah, the. We're footage. gonna play that. As a matter of fact, we got three minutes left, fellas. So we gonna play that on the way out. But yeah. Okay. 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 So Tolga did one. Uh, Felix did his first, and it was getting good footage. Then Togo dropped that fucking lyric one. That shit is popping because he found the footage of me dancing and when yeah, I was dancing see, back in the days and with the guys. He had guys the upper hand because like he had like behind the scenes footage never Wait, seen you have before. The cartoon? Yeah. Do you have the cartoon on it? Yeah, the cartoon. Yes, he put the, the, the yeah. I saw a piece of it. I need to go back in. Yeah, so the cartoon yeah, one is yeah. is the cartoon one is Felix is Felix's. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. the one with me dancing with the Magic Mountain and all that shit with my guys. The lyric video is totally. The lyric yeah. video. Yeah. And that, wow. and so I told him, I said, you never can have enough video. I have another one being made, which is supposed to be the, the official. Now, I talked yeah. to Heck today, and he's the one that did um, Stevie B the movie with the cartoon. Oh, okay. I hit okay. him back. He's, he's yeah. a, a guy out of New York. He was a Stevie B fan. He put that shit together on his own. He didn't even... He said, Stevie, I did something. I hope you like you're not gonna be insulted. I'm like, nigga, I love that shit. I said, yeah, we need to do yeah. a whole we need to do a whole we, yeah. we need to do a Hulu series on this, bro. This need to be a weekly yeah. series. But well, you animation see, those, is those are the ideas. That's the stuff. That's what right there. And we have those platforms. We didn't have this before. Yeah. We have YouTube. Got it like, now. Everybody knows my competition, but there's no there's no saying you we can't do this anymore. There's a lot of bread and freestyle fans. That's all I gotta say. And, and well, people we, ain't we, tapping into it. They need to. Yeah. <laughs> they need to. Well, well, hopefully, well, hopefully, hopefully, yeah. hopefully that we can set the template. And that's what I always was liking to do. Set the mm -hmm. template. Give the artist an opportunity to say, especially artists from us. And I'll tell you my view of the artist real quick. I'm going to spend about 30 seconds on this. I think freestyle artists, especially the ones that have stuck around now for 35 years plus, I think Shannon and them are going on 40 years. Lisa, yeah. I think, started in 85, 86, 87. Yeah. 86 and I, I didn't have my first hit until 87 but i was doing other stuff you know like i need you with bvsmp i was doing a, a lot of others a little stuff hassan i put out but we are a unique bunch yes that nobody was able to do what we did not even the new schoolers the new schoolers didn't do what we did so i look at us like a unique blessed uh, uh genre that was created just for us Yes. And uh, uh, when, you know, those first artists was coming out, they didn't know Trenere and all was, they was doing Jack the Rapper. They was doing they didn't know where to place us. But who the, the powers that be in the universe said, you know, what, I'm going to make this a legitimate, uh, legitimate genre that it's going to it's going to shake up the radio business. It's going to shake up the music business, It's going to shake up producers. People are going to want to do it uh, and it's going to have a long life. And those of us that have survived, I want to uh, give them their flowers. Kind of arenas at this at this point. Look, bigger than what we've ever been. And you know, when I used to try to bring people out to California, I was doing the bigger dates early. I always saw us like that. But uh, the industry people, Bill Graham, all the bigger promoters, you know, these are the heavy hitters. They didn't see us like that. Not even Alan at the time when I met him in 05, I got invited to a show in San Diego. So Q106, I think it was, did an old school show. And Alan was an old school promoter. And I mean, when he went old school, they was old yeah. school. Some of them people old had school. one foot in. The, yeah, I mean, he had uh, <laughs> me and Mrs. Jones. Yeah, and he had those passed old away. Piece. Way back. Yeah. Way, way, so you're talking about way back. Yeah. So he was doing shit like they, it was way back to us. So yeah. by one, uh, Q106 told him, say, look, we want you to put Stevie B. And Alan's like, who is Stevie B? And now, and this is 05, and I mean, I was already hot. I was already 20, 15 years into my career, but he had never heard of me. Once Q106 told him to put me on the show, uh, they said they want Stevie B to close the show. They specifically asked me to close. After that night, Alan said, I want to talk to you. Do you have other artists that do what y'all do? And I'm like, 
Nigga, where you been? I ain't, saying, yeah. I ain't saying nigga, but I'm saying, I'm angry. Where you been? We been around. He said, I ain't never heard of y'all, you know. But we had that meeting, and that meeting allowed me to say, hey, look, this is what I was trying to do in arenas a long time ago, but I can't get nobody to do it with me. Everybody's afraid. And he took upon himself. He, I gave him the lineup who I thought was hot. And, of course, you know, that's top three or four stayed the same. And then I said, there's another 15, 20 here that you can mix in and match. And whatever. But he didn't know who was who from the beginning. Alan learned. He, 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 he studied I it. He figured, I saw him learn. Yeah. Okay. He learned it. And, and look, he, he calls me every once in a while about who can go. I might say, you know, last person I put in, I put in Coro's name. I say, you know, you should put Coro on. He's, he's, you know, he's established. He should do this and should do that. And, yeah. uh, uh, he listens to my suggestions yeah. and yep. the artists have, have survived. Now, this has caused us to go into a whole nother, uh, a level of yeah. West freestyle music had won. Now, of course, we lost our, our radio positioning. Of course, now the platforms have saved us. Yeah. But now, look now, New York is doing uh, the big shows. Yeah. Vito is doing shows now. Uh, yeah. Adam Adam is doing shows in New York. Yeah. Um, you got people. Chris is doing stuff out in Cali. Uh, yeah. MC Magic. MC Magic come from our loins. You know, come from yeah. the, 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 the the hip hop thing and all that and coming out of Cali and he grew up with us and and he's doing now that brother know how to do marketing. He's done. He's doing a, a hey, makeup tell him cups. It's nothing personal. He's been trying to get Susie for like five years and every time he calls, he's unavailable. And I think he thinks it's something personal. I'm like, Magic, I swear to God, it's nothing personal, bro. It's just the time. And, we, and I'm a promoter, so I take that shit personal, too. I'm like, yeah. bro, why you can't get on the show? So. Yeah. All of this is the story that needs. First of all, the story. I think Maria, this girl who's doing the uh, the, the, the 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 documentary. documentary. Yeah, I mean, I you know she called me and I told her the real reasons why I can't. Stevie, you got to do what you got to do. And then Robert's yeah. calling me. You know, he's a the the productive production director or something right now. I say, I say, all of us doing this thirty five forty years, we don't just want to give our story away for free. Yeah. Mm. This has to turn. Everybody's turning their stories into chickens in the fridge, bro. We don't. Yeah. We have diamonds. We have things that people don't know about us. Like that's what we're talking about. There's things that people don't know about us that when we share it, it's a valuable commodity, and yeah. you don't want to just be giving that shit away for nothing. And I try to explain that to them, and you know, no, you should do it for historical value. And I say we've been doing shit for historical that's value. What, what do you think? What do you think? That's sharing, excellent. doing things in ways that people are not willing to do. Write the stories. Yes. It's easy to pick up a camera and tell the stories. Write out the story. I tell people all the time. I don't want to write anybody's stuff, but man, I've done several. I'll tell you what I did. I, I have no secrets. Everyone has a story. I That's know right. you have a book out. You know, everybody has a story. You know, tell that story that way. That's going to last forever. Those books will be. So these are these are the kinds of things that that innovates us yes. in where we are. Not many artists, and I'm going to tell you like this here. Not many artists last 35 years. A lot of people right. come out. They'll come out in 2018, and you don't even hear about them no more. That's five years yeah. ago, six years ago. Yeah. Okay, you don't hear about them no more. And you're not going to hear about them again. Now, the platforms are maybe doing some stuff. But as far as their popularity is concerned, they ain't doing no arenas either. Yeah. There's a lot of artists that was bigger than all of us as freestyle artists. And I mean big. They ain't working like we working. And I think the point that we were making is we're working more now than we yeah. were working back in 1988, 1989, 90 when we was hot. And, you got, and people like Alan have a lot to do with that. You know what I mean? A lot to they, do with it. A lot, a lot to do with it. Know how to do That's the promotions right. and marketing. Well, well he, already had, he already Media had that. He already had Leading the way. You got to realize you're leading the way. You know, you yeah. become a benchmark to a lot of artists. You know, artists, yeah. they think, okay, well, you know, I'm getting old. I'm about to retire. Hey, just look at Stevie. Stevie's still doing I ain't it. He's I, ain't about to, I ain't about to retire. a matter of fact, he this record, this we record got heat. We can start count. We can start the countdown when he retires. Until he retires, That's right. there's no countdown. I ain't going nowhere. And like I yeah. say, all all of this conversation that we were talking about, we talked about diet. We talked about health. We talked yep. about production. We talked about good management. Yep. We talked about good promoters, people mm -hmm. helping yourself and connecting yourself in a way. And then you still got to be in tuned 
to someone and somebody that's going to be able to guide you musically, especially if you're trying to still put out some new stuff. You just can't be sitting back and say you hope something going to come to me uh, just because I had a hit in 1988, 1989. You got to get out and promote yourself. You got to get out. Look at Trenere. Look at all the artists that's out there talking. Judy, look at uh, uh, Cynthia, look at Karina. All these people are coming up now and they talking, they getting out on the platforms and guess what? They working, they working yeah. a lot. Look at the look at what you do with your with your blast. Look at the cover girls, look at these. Look, you the gotta ones, get out there. Are, gotta get the out ones there. that are trying yeah. and, that are, and they're the ones that are doing, they're the ones that it's are paying off. People yeah. see you, they say they request you and don't think that Alan, myself and people don't see it. They see yeah, say, hey, man. All right, man, before nice we say goodbye to Latif, uh, go ahead and do your uh, Brazilian moment, uh, Stevie. To the Oi, galera. Portuguese. Oi, galera. Você viu é, o cara que a gente está entrevistando agora? É Latif. Ele é, é gerente do Cover Girls e Little Suzy. Há muitos anos agora. How many years now, uh, Latif, with Suzy and Little and, and, and the Cover Girls? How many years you've been managing? Five. Uh, Angel for 20 and the Cover Girls now in 11 years. With the so Cover Girls, 11 years. Lil Susie, 20 years. And Sal, even fazendo for 5 years. So Sal, S-I-L, it's a mixture of those garotas. But we were conversando aqui sobre the uh, production, the history of Latif, the story of story Steve, and how we can start and how we can sustain nossa carreiras em uh, 2023 é complicado e eu não falo a história do Brasil ainda como funk ou freestyle ainda continua com uma nova geração dos artistas como a uh, uh, Anitta e vários outros uh, usando nossa plataforma ok eles são nossos criais agora e continua e os produções produtores é, rádio ainda suportando desse caminho chama funk. E agora tem que falar Bobby Hum, Steve B tem um novo lançamento aqui em breve vocês não vão acreditar. Por favor, aguarda mais um pouco e Bales dos Sonhos, o show do Steve aqui em Brasil, que eu faço um grande festival e tá chegando em breve. Por favor, me aguarda. Uma coisa muito especial, Steve e Bobby no mesmo palco e para mostrar nossa bandeira Bob escreveu, eu ajudo de produção, minha voz, coisa assim. Uma coisa, vocês vão chorar quando você ouvir. Tá bom? Brasil, em breve vocês sabem, vocês são muito especial para mim. Te adoro. Você é o parte da minha vida. Ok? Até mais. All right. Bueno, mi gente, ya tú sabes que tenemos el, el productor y, y este hombre ha escrito uno escrito unos cuantos libros que tú puedes uh, ponerte disponible ahora por Amazon y para decirte la verdad si a ti te encanta el freestyle el freestyle movement la historia de freestyle vete para Amazon y agarra el libro de de Latif uh, you've got quite a few books up there not, it's not only one I have 10 books. That boy be, that boy be writing, bro. Okay. You be Mira, writing. Aquí tiene, aquí tiene Freestyle Blast, the yearbook, uh, 2022. También tiene otro libro que se llama Freestyle for Life. Y dice que es gratis. The, the Kindle version is free. Yeah, if you have Prime. Wow, Prime nice. Prime. If you have Prime. I got Prime. I get it for free. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Nice. Y, y aprovechen, nice. mi gente, que el hombre yeah. se ha dedicado a, a, a escribir muchas cosas, la historia de freestyle, todos los the big ones, you know, the, the, the trainer. Yo tengo que hablar con los brasileños también. O, 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 o Latif, a gente está entrevistando, ese hombre tiene varios libros, show the, the books again. Online, okay. y usted puede pedir alguna cosa, está en inglés, ¿no? En inglés, si usted habla inglés, usted quiere el libro de él, y usted puede pedir, y faz un pedido de música, eh, eh, libros de él, ¿está? É, é, Latif é muito especial para a gente, é muito grande o, a carreira dele, estricando agora mais de 30 anos junto com a gente. Valeu, até mais. All right, well, thank you so much, Latif, man. We really a know, plethora English, of knowledge, English. brother. You know what I mean? It was. It was, it was <laughs> what you say? What you say, Latif? I said I feel left out. I only know English. <laughs> It's, it's, it's all okay. good. We got your back, okay. man. We got your we back got your like back, a bra bro. strap, bro. <laughs> 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 you know, look, I, 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 
appreciate you guys having me on. It was fun. It's yeah. always, you know, mm-hmm. I always love talking to Stevie. And if you guys need anything, you know I'm here. You know where I'm at. Yeah. I love the idea. Thank you, Latin. Get them with we me. Wanna, we want to schedule something with Angel next, your wife. You know what I mean? Let's have her on so that we can chop it he's up. Like, he's like, well. I say I want to interview. He say, who you want to interview, me or Angel? And you know I had to clean it up quick. I'm like, both of y'all, both of y'all, both of y'all. <laughs> All right, guys. We got to wrap this up. But again, thank you so much, Latif. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Okay, thank you. All right, peace. Salam, ale- Salam alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. alaikum. Okay. Alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. Take it all back to how it used to be.